Well, on a night like tonight, <clears throat> I'm glad to see you here. A lot of places we could be, a lot of excuses we could have, but it's always good to be in God's house, and I appreciate you being here. We want to have a good time worshiping Him and, and singing and praising Him and being together. So let's start off with a big bang tonight by thanking God for His presence and allowing us to be here. And while we pray, we certainly want to remember all the people in Florida and those who are being affected by this storm and those that will be. It's out there in the future also. And you pray for me. I pray as we pray together for these things to happen. Father, thank you for <clears throat> allowing us to come to your house tonight, for giving us this house so that we can gather and worship. A time of praise, a time of thanksgiving. A time of love and a time of remembrance. And Father, we are truly grateful to live where we live. And we think about all those in Florida that are going through so much right now and so much yet to come, such an unknown to so many. Millions without electricity can't go to church, can't do anything. Many that are devastated already. But God, as we come together here, we are to pray for them. And we're asking you to protect them and keep them and provide for them. And during this dark night, bring peace to their hearts and their minds. And God, as you've given us this opportunity to come and given us the weather and the mind to come, we thank you for it. And we want to just rejoice tonight. We want to have a good time. And we want to be able to pray and have faith and believe for not just tonight, but the days ahead, even for us and the things around us and others. So let us sing songs and rejoice. And let us give you great praise and honor because you you do it. And we sure owe it to you. So what we do in the next little bit is our way of saying thank you. And we sure do love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Keeps me singing.
And Father, we are thankful tonight for so many different things. Each one of us has things we're thankful for, but all of us are thankful for you saving our soul and giving us hope and giving us a future, giving us your promises, your word that lead us and guide us every day. And the list just goes on and on. So, Lord, we just say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for all you've done for us. And we pray it in your precious name. Amen. Amen. I want you to uh, open your Bible to the book of Colossians. While you're looking that up, let me just tell you, be much in prayer for um, the victims and the people in Florida and all they're going through. And um, we don't know what the next few days hold. We know who holds the days, but we don't know what the day holds for us. I want you all to be safe. And um, if any of you have any problems, you need something, get a hold of me. And uh, we as a church will do the best we can to try to help somebody. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you can't get a hold of me, get a hold of Jimmy Brantley. Um, and we'll do what we can. If you can't get a hold of either one of us, get a hold of Mary. And then she'll get a hold of us because she knows how to do that. <laughs> All right? But be safe. Pray for the others. Be safe. I, as I was talking with Ricky a while ago, and uh, he, he was saying that you know, once this thing comes through and gets on the other coast, then it's going to take a turn back up towards North Carolina. And I, I told Ricky I was thinking about him this morning, but realized he wasn't down in Florida, so I knew he was safe from that. But when that thing turns, it's going to go back towards North Carolina, and that is his territory. So we want to we want to be praying because we just don't know what's out there, but. God does, and, and God's going to take care of us. We just got to trust him and believe him. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Pray for one another. We don't know what the needs are that exist here in the church, and sometimes we don't know how to pray for them. And I know I don't because I don't know what happens to all of you. So I just pray for God to look after all of you and take care of you and minister to you as whatever you need, and we'll do that. So you, 
you pray for one another, pray for our, those on the prayer list and prayer chain uh, for them to be ministered to and taken care of uh, as they need it, and certainly God knows that. So be much in prayer for all these things in the next few days, especially pray for one another. All right, Mary. This is Donna Hazard. Uh, yeah, kept praying for her all day yesterday to be able to get on that flight, and, and she got out late last night back to New York. So. Yeah, that's an answer to prayer, and, and uh, thank you all for praying for her. She'd tell you the same thing if she was here and uh, hug every one of your necks. I promise you that, so thank the Lord for that. Yes. All right, I want you to look at Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> I want to begin with verse 14 and read you read three or four verses. It says, most of all, and above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and to the Father by him. Uh, these words are words that are designed to teach us how we should worship and praise, admonish, and look at God. Simply be thankful. Just be thankful. If, if we had the time tonight, we've done it before, but if we had the time tonight, I'd, I'd love to begin over here with Jimmy, and I'd just simply say, in one word, what are you thankful for? And we'd just go all the way around the church, and you'd give one-word answers. And we would get peace and love and life, church. We'd, we'd have all kind of answers. I'm not going to do that because of time, but if you, if you could do that tonight, what, what one thing would you be thankful for if you could do it? Not in one word. It, what, what would you be thankful for? Which thing in your past would you be thankful for? What thing in the present would you be thankful for? What thing in the future would you be present for? You know, normally when we do that, we, everybody's always talking about something in the past. What about the future? We have something to be thankful for in the future. See? So what would you be thankful for? And as we look at that, I'm going to, I'm, I'm very appreciative of those who've testified we're going to do that anyway, so you jump the gun, which is fine. But I want us to take a little bit of time, and we're going to do it at different times, for you to just give a short testimony.
if you, if you look at the situation we're facing right now with the hurricane, forget the, I mean, the, the riots and the, all the stuff in America that's wrong. There are some good things going on. And there are good things going on in the lives of Christians. There are good things going on in the lives of you. Has been in the past or now. And I want you just to just a, a brief testimony. But what I would like for you to do is I would love for some of you that don't testify to testify. I, ju I just can't express that enough. If we can't praise God here in this room, there is no way we're going to do it outside this room. And I'm thankful for those that testify every time they get a chance. I thank God for that. But I also want some of the rest of you. Because the words that you speak will be words of encouragement to somebody else. And you may encourage somebody else that lacks the courage to get up and do it if you do it. So I'm not going to wait long. I'm going to keep sharing the word. So who wants to share a word real quick? Amen. All right, somebody else. All right, come on. Very good. All right. Somebody else. Daddy? Amen. All right. One more. All right. You read it first before we start back. All right, let's go back and look at the word for a minute. Colossians chapter 3, going to begin with verse 15, reading to you in a different translation. Verse 14 says, Most of all, let love guide your life. For then the whole church will stay together in perfect harmony. Let the peace of heart which comes from Christ be always present in your hearts and your lives, for this is your responsibility. And it's your privilege as members of his body, and always be thankful. Now, God tells us that, that we're supposed to always be thankful. See, I've been telling you that for a long time, and you thought I was making it up. You thought it's just something I wanted you to do. But God says that. Always be thankful. Not in the good times. Always be thankful. Because no matter what you're going through, it could be worse. That's one way to look at it. But the big thing he's saying here is always be thankful for no matter what you're going through, he's going through it with you. Amen. And it doesn't get any better than that. You'll never be in a situation that God's not there. You'll never be in a situation where you can't hear God's voice, feel his direction, or see the way. You, you just won't be there. Because when the physical eye fails you, the spiritual eye is what takes over. And the spiritual eye is how we understand and believe in God. Always be thankful. So why in this verse are we supposed to be thankful? And he says, first of all, be thankful for peace. Just, just peace. And as we think about peace, we think, well, we're, we're, we're war, so we're not at peace. We have terror in America, so we're not at peace. We have gangs and thugs and people, sinners, demonics, shooting and killing, so we're not at peace. So we can look at it that way, 
and say, yeah, that, that's true. That's true, but that's not what he's talking about. He said, let there be peace, first of all, in your heart. Peace in your heart. That is an individual thing. And nobody can give you peace in your heart but God. If, if you needed, I said the other day, if you, if, if you like $14 having 27 cents, how much money do you have? I asked, I asked Brody that the other day, and he just looked at me. And, and I kept on telling him, I said, Brody, I said, if you, if you lack $14 having 27 cents, how much money do you got? He finally figured it out. That means you owe somebody. And I had him figure out how much did he owe somebody, and he figured it out. So if that's what it is, and, and you lack that amount of money, and I come to you and I give it to you, now you got peace in your heart because you've got the money to pay for it. If you needed $100,000 to pay off your debts and be free of debt, and then I gave it to you, would you have peace in your heart? No, you wouldn't. Because only God can give you peace in your heart. You'd have peace in your mind. You might have peace in your bank account. Peace in your debits, but not your heart. The world banks on things to give you what only God can give you. And that's why they try to buy so much, get so much, be so much, do like everybody else, trying to find that elusive peace that they can't get, they can't buy. But God says, I want you to have peace in your heart. And he says, if you have peace in your heart, then I want you to have peace in your life. So the only way we can have peace in our life is to have peace in our heart. Peace in our life does not mean the ceasing of war, the ceasing of trials and tribulations, the ceasing of sickness and illness and disease. It doesn't mean that. God says, Danny, I want you to have peace in your heart I don't want you to have peace in your life. If you have peace in your heart, you can have peace in your life. That means that wherever I walk in my life, wherever the Spirit leads me in my life, I can trust God. And I can say as the psalmist did, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That means peace. Why? Because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That means, God, you go everywhere I go. And you prepare everything in my path. And no matter what happens out there, I know you're with me. And that's the peace that nothing on this earth can buy. Amen. Peace. I want you to be thankful. Because when you give God thanks, it causes you to remind, to remind yourself and to remember something. Either I remember something that's happened in the past, or I remember a word that was given somehow through song or through whatever, or I remember something that makes me focus on the future, and I'm thankful for those things. I'm very thankful. If we learn to be thankful, and the kind of thanks that God is talking about here is certainly thanks unto Him. And it's through words, just like we do here, testimonies. Being thankful. You're going to go home tonight, and if you're any kind of a person, you'll think about the fact, I did it, I testified, I praised him again, I did it. And to those of you who don't normally do it, if you get up and do it, you'd realize you've conquered a demon in your life, the one that tries to keep your mouth shut by saying you're too scared, you're too this, you're too that. It's not true, the devil's a liar. It's not how long your testimony is, it's whether or not it comes from your heart. So he says, be thankful in this verse because it's expected of us. We ought to realize it is an honor for us to represent God. It's an honor. And when honor is due somebody, then we need to give it.
All right. Who wants to share it? Billy, you up. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Right now, verse 16. He says, Remember what Christ taught and let his words enrich your lives and make you wise and teach them his words to each other and sing them out in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing to the Lord with thankful hearts again whatever we do do it with a thankful heart now he said I want you to have peace in your heart if you have peace in your heart then you acknowledge where it comes from is God and then you want to be thankful and you're thankful to God and you thank him for what he did for you, what he is doing, and what he will do. That's by faith. And you're thankful for it. I try every night, every day, at some point, to say, God, thank you for saving my soul. I say, thank you for what you did at Calvary. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. And God, thank you for saving my life. And I remind him sometimes, I say, in Jacksonville. Because that's what my mind is on when I'm saying that, because I'm thankful that he saved me spiritually and he saved me physically. Oh, there are many times he's done it physically, and I, I'm, I'm well aware of that. But I think about what happened there and realize it was nothing but the hand of God. The hand of God. So then I, I want to be thankful and I prove that by doing his work. And I know if I do the work of God, then I'm thankful for you. And I'm proving my thankfulness to you by preaching the word, by living the word, and by being the word. I am thankful for every one of you. And he says in this verse, I want you to be thankful. Remember what Christ taught. Remember what Christ taught. The word. Remember the word. And let his words enrich your lives. So that the word of God enrich my life is what he's saying. And I'm thankful for it. It has made me rich in my life. Not with money, but with things that money can't buy. That peace in my heart and everything else. Let it do that. 
and make you wise. So I'm, I'm a wise man. So every time that one of us say, I'm, I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I'm pure ignorant, I just, then what you're doing is going against the Word of God. Because the Word says, that Jesus says that when you have the Word in you, you're wise. You see? We measure things by the world. God measures it by His Word. So I'm wise. And the next time the devil tempts you to say something contrary to that, stop and say, God, I'm not, I'm not dumb. I'm wise, and I thank you for that. He taught us, let, us, let his words enrich your lives and make you wise. And then the things that God has made in us, that he has given us, the things he's taught us and made us wise, take those things, he says, and teach them to each other. So whatever God's given me, I've got to teach you. Whatever God's given you, you got to teach somebody else. He didn't give it to you to, to, to store up and it's just yours. He gave it to you to, to enrich you and make you wise and then to take it and give it to somebody else. And he says, do it. Sing them out in psalms, your praises. Sing them out in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs. Sing to the Lord with a thankful heart. Now, I, I think about it all the time when we get up here in the choir. Every, every choir member that gets up here and sings is either singing a song with their mouth or with their heart. Every time you sing in response to being led by the choir, you're either singing with your mouth or your heart. Mouth songs will be forgotten very quickly. All they do is take up time. Spiritual hearts that sing spiritual songs are things that will make an impression. And God will use the Holy Spirit, as Billy's talking, to go to somebody that needs whatever you're singing at that moment. And you never know who it is. Could be somebody on the TV. Could be somebody in this room. Could be the person next to you in the choir. But you, I, I pray God let them be singing from their heart. Because that's the only way the Holy Spirit can work. He says, so God has enriched me and has made me wise. So I can take that and give it to y'all. He says, teach the, each of us. Teach through psalms and hymns, spiritual songs and praises, and do it with a thankful heart. So as we sing, love lifted me, we need to recall when love lifted me. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my soul rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight. Sing that with a thankful heart. See, we, we recall with the words. So many times we sing words. And God wants us to sing the songs from our heart with feeling. And he said, whatever I've given you, give back. Teach. And we think we're not teachers. When you're singing, you're teaching if you're singing for God. So we've got to make sure that we do that. He makes us better. He makes us wiser. And then we have to sing your praise. Speak your say, praise. However you do it. But do it with a thankful heart because you're teaching somebody else. Every testimony is teaching somebody something. Okay? Who's next? Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. All right, verse 17. He says, And whatever you do or whatever you say, let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus and come with him into the presence of God, the Father, to give him your thanks. Now, I want to read that to you again. And I want you to look at the words, how he says this. And whatever you do, or whatever you say, that be your testimonies, our word, whatever you do or say, let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus. So you're a representative of Christ, and you're speaking as his representative. Okay? Now think about it. And come with him into the presence of God the Father. Now isn't that strange? Come with Jesus into the presence of God the Father. You ever thought about that? Come with Jesus into the presence of God the Father. So we're, we're, we're thanking him as a representative of Jesus. So we're speaking for Jesus, his representative. And then he says, after you get through speaking, come with him into the presence of God the Father. Can you not see yourself standing up and glorifying God as his representative and then holding his hand and walking into the presence of God? Your spirit and his spirit mesh together into the presence of God. And people talk about you can't do that. You can't see him. So how do you enter into his presence? With praise and thanksgiving. And Jesus is doing the same thing. And you can say, well, he, he, Jesus don't do that. Well, my Bible tells me that Jesus prays for me. If my Father can pray for me, then I also believe he can turn to his daddy and say, thank you for being with me at Calvary. Thank you for giving me the privilege of dying for the world. So I give thanks unto God as a representative of Jesus, and then with him I enter into God the Father's presence. How? With thanks. We, we cannot thank God enough. Constantly thanking Him by the way we live, the things we say, the things we do. Our speech and our actions must honor God. They have to. And when you come to church, 
you're honoring God. When you pray, you're honoring God. When you give testimonies, you're honoring God. When you encourage one another, you're honoring God. Your very life is a testimony. You're teaching other people about Christ. So in the adversities that we go through in this world, let your light so shine before men that they may see your heavenly Father. And then let yourself enter in with him into God's presence. What a thought. Who wants to go very quickly? Amen. You it? Amen. All right. Amen. Amen.
Misty. Misty. Wait for him. Amen. All right, Misty. All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right. We'll, we'll do one more. Is there somebody that doesn't normally testify that would love to end this thing? Bill, you testified before. <coughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Okay. Who you, who are you pointing at? Amen. All right. Dana?
Amen. All right, I want to thank you for coming tonight, for being here. I want to remind you again, be safe in whatever you do. And if anybody needs any help, get a hold of us. Uh, we pray you won't, but you never know what's going to happen. But be safe. Be sure you pray for all these people that are going through all the stuff we're going through, okay? Father, we're grateful tonight for such a good group here, for enthusiasm, Lord, that will allow us to testify, for courage, Lord, to stand up and say, I just want to thank the Lord. You tell us to have peace in our hearts, and that will give us a good life. And when we had that, you tell us to be thankful and give you praise. Give it in song. Give it in word. Give it in deed. Because we're teaching other people about the love of Jesus when we do it. So I thank you for the lessons that have been taught tonight by every person who has spoken up. Thank you for that. And I ask you to reward them in special ways because of what they've done for you tonight. Now, God, go with us and keep us. Again, bless all those people that's going through all this stuff right now. And that they will go through it later on, God. Keep us safe here. Keep our children safe. Guide and protect, we pray. And we just remind you we love you and thank you for the privilege of being with you in your house this night. Amen and amen.